Hey YouTube, welcome to another edition of the Nurse Lounge. In this edition, we're gonna talk about some red flags that you may be working for a bad hospital. So if you wanna see what I'm talking about, what these red flags could be, please stay tuned. Welcome back, my name is Dr. Marita P, registered nurse here for 18 years now. OBGYN is my specialty. I'm currently a nurse educator and I am doctorally prepared. So let's jump right into this. If you wanna know what things are red flags to me, to me, that you may be working at a bad hospital, especially in today's climate, post COVID, actually pre COVID and beyond, um, that let's talk about those things. I have them listed here on my phone. So I'm going to be looking down from time to time. But like I said, these are some red flags that you must consider when you are thinking about, Hmm, is this the hospital for me? So I have about five red flags. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five, five red flags. These are not all inclusive. However, these are some, some, some things to consider, okay? So red flags of a bad hospital. Number one, sign on bonuses. Now, I know some people will say, well, sign on bonuses, a lot of jobs are offering bonuses now in today's climate just to be more lucrative and attractive to um, potential uh, candidates. This is true. However, the larger the sign-on bonus, the larger the problem. The only thing I recommend that if you're going to take that sign-on bonus, make sure you read that contract in depth to see how long do you have to work for them, to see um, what it has to be, is it have to be paid back in full or is it in increments? How do you actually get the sign-on bonus? Do you have to actually work the two years or how many years first or do they pay you so much per check? Get the details of the sign-on bonus before you accept uh, an offer. Again, if a hospital is offering you fifty, sixty thousand dollars as a sign-on bonus, that means they cannot attract candidates on their own merit. Okay, sign-on bonuses to me is a no-no. But again, if you're going to take the sign-on bonus, take it and do not sell your soul to the hospital. Take it, pocket it, save it, have a way to pay it back if need be, so you can leave that facility if you need to leave that facility. Do not be trapped in by a sign-on bonus is what I'm trying to say. Number two, if they have a high turnover rate. So when you go to the interview process and you ask the nurse manager or if you're actually being interviewed by fellow peer nurses, um, ask the question, you know, on average, how often are, you know, nurses leaving and for what reasons? I asked the question, why do nurses leave? Um, I lived in a military town. So being that I lived in a military town, people left because of deployment for their husbands typically. And that is the reason why they left the said hospital, or at least that's what it was told, um, because it is a military town. Well, that makes perfectly good sense. But when it comes to a hospital that's nice and you see the same position, you know, being posted online and also while you're in nursing school, be watching the positions that come open on the floor that you want or the unit that you want at the said hospitals that you're trying to apply for. If they have like 10 of these or they have a lot of travelers, which that's a bonus one. That's a bonus one. I'm going to say it's a bonus. Uh, we're going to add that. We're going to make it number three, but that's a bonus. If they have a lot of travelers, that is another red flag that it may not be the greatest hospital. The whole purpose of a travel nurse is to supplement staff, okay? And you're going to have peaks and valleys in terms of which staff is going to come and go. That's normal. But when you have more travelers than staff, that's a telltale sign that something is not right and you probably should run. Now, if you want to take something for the team for the lot, you know, that's fine. If you want to sit there and work and say, you know what, I really want to do this job, whatever. Keep in mind, if the staff is, is uh, staffed, if the floor is staffed by travelers, mainly, they have more travelers than staff nurses, that is a red flag. That is your bonus one. Actually, no, that's actually on here. That was number three. Sorry. That was number three. Not a bonus. More travelers than staff nurses. That is a bonus. That's not a bonus. Sorry. That was actually on there. So when the number four, when the charge nurse has been only a nurse for six months, you're going to see a lot of hospitals where charge nurses should be what we call seasoned, meaning experienced. If you only been a nurse for six months and you're already being forced to be charged, because of the fact that everybody above you in terms of seniority has not been working or is not working, you are considered to be senior staff at six months, that is a huge red flag. A huge red flag if you are charged at six months. Now, 
Some hospitals, even when I was, when I came out of nursing school, will put you charged at six months. But for me, that was a no. I don't know enough about anything to be charged, let alone, let alone be a nurse on the floor. So that was a huge red flag for me. If you're going to have me be charged nurse and I don't know nothing because I'm six months out, hmm, that's a red flag. No, 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 no. I'm just now getting out of orientation a lot of times. Usually if you had a good orientation, which means you had an orientation for up to six months, you are just getting out of orientation yourself. So you really don't even know what's going on, um, let alone to be charged nurse at some facility. Be mindful of that. Number five, this is the last one. When the nurse with the most seniority is only two years out. It kind of ties into number four in terms of being a charge nurse at six months. But when you kind of scan to see, you know, the, the not the room, but your, your unit, and you're like, who has the most seniority here? Who, who's been here the longest? And the longest one is two years out. That is a red flag that they cannot recruit and retain qualified faculty, I mean, not faculty, but staff, okay? That is a red flag. When the senior nurses are not five, 10, 15 years in, but they're only two years, that's a red flag. And this also includes two years as like a new nurse or even two years of being there. So you're a nurse that you've been a nurse before other jobs, but you've only been there for two years. Um, and you are the one with the most experience at that facility, even though you've been a nurse for five or 10 years, that is also still a red flag. Why is that? Because why is it that we are losing staff? Why are we losing staff? And we know all the reasons why, okay? That's been published. That's been said time and time again as to why we're losing staff. But the thing is, these are some five things that you want to consider, okay? Five things you want to consider. Just to recap, sign on bonuses, okay? Be mindful of those. High turnover rate. Um, more travel nurses than staff. When the charge nurse has been there for only six months, a new nurse, shall I say, and the last one was when the, the nurse with the most seniority has only been at that facility for two years. Here's the bonus, okay? I told you I had a bonus. That travel nurse was not the bonus. Here's the bonus. When the nurse manager also changes like every year. So every time you come in and you hear there's a new nurse manager, that tells you is something wrong with that facility. The nurse manager is supposed to be a liaison between, when I say liaison, but someone who works in between the staff and the administration, okay? Nursing managers are part of administration, but they have upper admin, and then they have their staff, nurses. If, you're, if your nurse manager is changing all the time, every year to two years, just like the CNO often changes, but every one to three years, then that could be an indicator too that it's a bad facility for whatever reason. Um, be mindful of those things. I'm not one to, you know, I don't want to be in upper management. Never had a desire to because I feel like you have to sell your soul to do so. But I do want to say that when the management changes all the time, that also shows the instability of the floor that you're working on. If it's changing all the time. Again, keep in mind there's reasons as to why people change or people change jobs. Sometimes it's due to it's time to retire or whatever. But a lot of times in these in these most recent situations, it's not about retirement. It's about burnout. It's about the fact that they, you know, um, are just tired of the 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 capitalism society, capitalist society that we have in just the United States in general, and of course in nursing. And they don't want to be a part of that, and it's causing a wedge between them and their staff. So that was your bonus right there when nurse managers also also leave. Okay. All right, so that, that sums it up. If you all can think of some more red flags of a, of a bad hospital, please comment those below. As usual, let's have dialogue and let's chat in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.